Hi, my name is Julia and I'm a PhD student at UCL. I'm going to be doing the DCM demo with you. So this is where you'll put into practice everything that you've learned about DCM for EEG by running perhaps your very first DCM on FBM. We're going to be analyzing 120 channel EEG data from a single subject. This was made available by Marta Garrido and colleagues and can be downloaded from the SPM website by using the QR code on the top corner there. So if you can, I invite you to download the data now so you can follow along as we do this demo. So this data set is from uh, Marta Garrido's 2007 paper, which used DCM to look at mismatch negativity responses in 13 healthy volunteers. In this study, Participants kept their eyes closed while they listened to a thousand hertz standard tones that were sometimes interrupted by a deviant 2000 hertz tone. And this is known to elicit the so-called mismatch negativity response, which can be easily measured using EEG. So we are going to use dynamic causal modeling to explain the difference between standard and deviant tones that you can see here in green, so this MMN response. When we record EEG data, we first have to pre-process it, and often we have to do a sensor space analysis before we can model it with DCM. And this is because we need to identify some uh, effects that we can then explain with dynamic causal modeling. It's also a good idea to do a source reconstruction so that we know which brain regions we want to include in our model. In this case, we're very lucky because we have already pre-processed data and because the sources for the MMN have been very well established in the literature. So we're only going to be doing the DCM part of the analysis. However, if you do want to go over all the previous steps, you can download the raw data and follow the instructions in the SPM manual, chapter 41, which will take you through the pre-processing, the sensor space analysis, and the source reconstruction as well. So if you haven't already downloaded the data, please do it now using the QR code on the top of the slide, the top corner, because um, we're about to get started. Okay. We're going to start by opening MATLAB and then we'll type in SPM EEG to open the SPM GUI. Make sure that you have added SPM to your path and that you navigate to the folder containing your data before you open SPM. Then we click on the DCM button. This will open this window. This is our DCM for EEG window that we'll be using to specify all the options and all the settings for our DCM. We're going to start by loading the data. So to do that, we're going to click on new data and we're going to select um, our data file and click. Okay, we've loaded our data so we can start looking at the different settings and the different options that we have here. Before we start, a few things we need to know. So there are a few choices that we have to make when we are um, specifying our model. First of all, we'll need to choose an observation model. You've seen before that there are different observation models depending on the data that we're trying to explain with DCM. The two most common are DCM for event-related potentials or ERPs and DCM for cross-spectral densities or CSDs. In DCM for ERP, we model the onset of our stimulus as our input, and the model returns predictions in the time domain. Okay, so we're fetching data in the time domain. In DCM for cross-spectral densities, or DCM for CSD, which is used for resting state data, we don't have an external input, so we instead model spontaneous neuronal innovations as our input, and the model returns predictions in the frequency domain, right? So we're fetching data in the frequency domain. Do bear in mind um, that there are other models as well that I'm going to show you in a second. In this case, we have ERP data, right? We have our MMN 
response, so we're trying to model. So we're going to use um, the ERP observation model with our standard and deviant tones as our input. Okay, so as I said just now, um, we also have phenomenological observation models like DCM for induced responses, which model a particular data feature. So if this is something that you're interested in, definitely do read more about it. Um, you may be able to use it for your analysis. Okay, so we're going to select in this first drop down menu uh, ERP. This is where we choose our observation model. And then we have a second drop down menu where we have options like CMC, CMM, CMM and MDA, etc. If you want to know what each of these drop down menus are, you can just hover over them and then you'll see this message that appears which explains what each um, menu is and what you have to do at each step. So this is very handy if you're starting to use DCM and you don't know exactly what it's asking you to select, you can just um, use your mouse to hover over that menu and you'll have a message that will appear. In this case, what it's asking us to do is to choose our neuronal model. So you've seen before that there are two big families of neuronal um, models in DCM. We have convolution-based DCM, which considers cortical mesal columns, and then we have conductance-based DCM, which is based on a single cell's electrophysiological properties, and this is scaled up to model population dynamics. Within each of these two big families, we have three population models and four population models. In three population models, we have one pyramidal neuron population, one spiny cell, cell population, and one inhibitory interneuron population. In the four population model, also known as a canonical microcircuit, we explicitly incorporate the neuronal sources of forward and backward connections, which are superficial and deep pyramidal neurons. So we have not one, but two populations of pyramidal cells. And then we have several options depending on whether we want to consider only first order statistics or first and higher order statistics. And also whether we want to treat neuronal activity as a point process or incorporate a spatial dimension. So this will depend on whether we're using convolution or conductance based DCM and um, other considerations that we may have. So the neuronal model that we choose will depend not on our data, like the observation model, but on our research question. And it's often best to keep it as simple as possible as long as you're answering that research question. In this case, we're going to go for convolution-based DCM, and we're going to have a three-population model. You can see here all the uh, neuronal models that are currently implemented in SPM and that you can choose from. So we have both convolution-based and conductance-based models, and they can go from very simple, like the ERP model, which is a three-population model, to um, very complex models like CMM uh, with NMDA receptors. So again, the model that you use in your analysis will depend on your research question, but keep it as simple as possible. For example, in my PhD research, I'm interested in NMDA receptor hypofunction in emerging psychosis, so I often use the CMM model with NMDA receptors. But if you're not interested in NMDA receptors, then don't use this model. Use a simpler um, version of it. Okay, so we're going to go back to MATLAB, and we're going to select our neuronal model, in this case ERP, and then move on to this first section called data and design. Here we're going to um, specify our between trial effects. So um, we have two trials, right, two conditions, which are our standard and deviant terms. And I'm going to code the between trial effects as zero for the baseline, so the standard terms, and one for the modulation, um, in this case, the deviant terms. I'm going to give it a name. In this case, I'm going to call it Deviant. You can call it wherever you want, as long as it's informative. So the between trial effect could actually uh, be coded as well as minus one and one for some paradigms where there's no clear baseline condition. For example, if you're comparing responses to houses versus faces, 
right? So in this case, we don't have a clear baseline. So instead of using 0, 1 for the between trial effects, we can code it as minus 1 and 1. And in this case, the extrinsic connectivity matrix A, so the baseline connectivity, the background connectivity, becomes the average between the two conditions. There are also a few more options that we can uh, choose from here. So again, if you don't know what they are, just hover over them with your mouse and you'll have those methods that will appear explaining what everything is. Okay, so in this case, um, we can select the number of DCT basis functions for detrending. We can also um, choose to downsample the time bins by some factor, and then we can choose the number of modes for data selection. So by default, uh, we use linear detrending. So detrend is just one. We use no subsampling, so that's also one. And we use eight eigenmodes for data selection. Uh, you can choose to change them if it seems appropriate for your analysis. And then you can choose to use a Hanning window. So this will force the signals to decay towards the window edges. Okay, moving on to the next section. So this is the electromagnetic model. And again, we see another drop-down menu with four different options. In this case, these are IMG, ECD, LFB, and ITR. So this is actually our spatial or forward model of how neuronal activity is transformed into measured responses. If you're working with LFB data, or intralaminar recordings, you're going to use the relevant spatial model. This is very obvious in that case. For EEG, we can either assume that the lead field of each source is modeled by a single equivalent current dipole. This would be the ECD spatial model. Or we can model each source as a patch of dipoles on the gray matter sheet. And this is the imaging or IMG spatial model, right? So this will be using a patch on the cortical surface instead of a single dipole. Okay. And then we'll also have to specify here our sources. And as I said, we're lucky because for the MMN, these have been uh, pretty well established in the literature. So these are bilateral uh, auditory, primary auditory cortex, bilateral superior temporal gyrus and right inferior frontal gyrus. So these are the sources that we're going to be um, using for this DCM. Okay, so let's go back to MATLAB. Okay, so let's go back to MATLAB. And here we're going to start typing in our source labels. So left A1, right A1, left STG, right STG, and right IFG. Okay, and once we've done that, we can type in the coordinates here. Okay, so we're going to add them one by one to the second window. If you have a file that's saved that contains this information, you can simply load it by using that load button instead of having to type them in every, every single time. So that can come in quite handy if you're rerunning um, a lot of models. And then we press the arrow and we move on to the next section. Here as well, um, we can specify the onset. So by default, this is 64 milliseconds for the onset with a duration of 16 milliseconds. So that's your um, stimulus onset. You might want to change it if that's appropriate. You can change it here. Okay, we click next and then we can see our sources that we've just added. You can see all of them at the same time or look at them one by one, make sure that they are in the right place. And then once we have our sources, we move on to the next section that's called neuronal model. This is where we'll specify the connections between these sources. Okay. So to specify our neuronal model, we first of all have 
an A matrix, matrix A. This is our background extrinsic connectivity. And it's subdivided into three matrices for forward, backward, and lateral connections. So in this case, we're going to have forward connections from A1 to SDG and from SDG to IFG. All right, so what we do is we number our sources in the way that we've added them in our model. So in this case, it will be left A1, right A1, left SDG, right SDG, right IFG from one to five. And then we're going to specify the connections in the matrix going from column to row. So if we want to add a forward connection from source one to source three, we'll go to column one, row three, and we'll add a one in there. Or if you're using the GUI, you'll click in the button. I'm going to show you in a second how to do it. If we want to specify a forward connection from source two to source four, again, we go to column two, row four, and that's the right one. Okay, this can seem very easy, but it can actually get very confusing very fast. So make sure that you're very confident about this, so that you don't end up um, specifying the totally wrong neuronal model by accident, okay? So um, one matrix for forward connections, one matrix for backwards, and then one for lateral connections. In this case, we'll have lateral connections between left and right SDG. So that'll be between sources three and four. We also have... Um, the C uh, matrix or rather vector, which is our inputs. So here we have inputs coming into left and right A1, sources one and two. So we'll just have A1 in uh, the first two rows. So let me show you. So we just click, click and click on the relevant um, connections. So going every single time from column to row. Our lateral connections from three to four and from four to three, and then our input there. Okay. Once we have specified our A matrix, we're going to move on our B matrix. So these are our condition specific connections. This is the modulatory effect that we're um, trying to explain with BCM. So that's the effect of our task. In this case, we're going to specify all forward and all backward connections, as well as self connections in A1, left and right. So let's do it. We add those self connections there, so from one to one and from two to two, and then also um, all the forward and backward connections. And if it's easy, you can just copy what you did above for the forward and backward connectivity matrices. Okay, another example to make sure that it's very clear. Um, so imagine I've added two forward connections and I'm missing this last forward connection from uh, source two to four. I'm going to add uh, by going to column two, row four, and add a one here. And then imagine I'm missing this backward connection from source five to four. Again, I go to column five, row four, and I add my one there. Easy. Okay, so imagine we want to do that. Imagine we only want to have backward connections in our B matrix. That's our hypothesis. So we're going to change that and then click on invert DCM and let the magic happen. You'll see that this window will pop up. So you can see at the top the hidden state. This will change as you go through various iterations. Then we have our response and prediction. So this is our data that we're trying to fit. And then you can see our um, predicted response on top of it as well. And then at the bottom, we have our parameters. So we have our neuronal uh, model parameters and our spatial model parameters as well. This can take a while to run, um, from a few minutes to a few hours, depending on your model. So in the meantime, this should only be a few minutes, but I'm going to show you a different way to use DCM and to run a DCM model. So 
The GUI is very, very useful when you're starting to learn um, how to use BCM and about all the different options that you can that you can choose from. But in some cases, it may be more useful to use an STM batch instead to use a script to run your models. This is exactly the same as what we've just seen, except that instead of clicking through the GUI, you'll just have to uh, write it in the script. So we, um, we, we write our file name um, and then again, what type of data we're fitting. This is ERP data, our model, um, both neuronal and spatial. So in this case, ERP, we use ECD here, it says IMG. It's the other option. Uh, the trials that uh, we're going to be modeling within our data file. So in this case, it was one, so that's our standards, and two, that's our deviance, the time window. This is the default, 0 to 200, but you can change it depending on the task that you're using, you will need to change it. And then um, the number of modes for data selection, the number of VCT components, um, the onset, so 60 milliseconds. Again, this is the default, it's a prior. Uh, you can change it if you wish, and then whether you want to um, downsample. In this case, there's no downsampling. Okay, then we'll run the SBM DCM ERP data function to start preparing the structures for the forward model. We'll also have to, uh, as we just did, input our um, source locations, the coordinates for, for our sources, and also the labels. We run SBM DCM ERP dip fit. And then um, we specify our connectivity model. So just like we did by clicking um, on the GUI, we'll just put a number one wherever we want to uh, specify a connection. So um, remember that matrix A1 is our forward connections. So in this case, we're adding connections in this bit of script that I'm showing you from source one to three, two to four, and four to five, right? As we did using the GUI. We have our between trial effects, so zero and one, and in this case they're called uh, rare. And then we give a name to our DCM, and we use SPM DCM ERP to estimate the parameters of our model. Okay, very easy, exactly the same as we've just done, but in a different format. So if you want to give this a go, um, you can find this script in example scripts folder in the SPM distribution. So um, feel free to use this as your template and to adapt it for your own analysis. Okay, so once we've finished running our DCM, there are a lot of things that we can look at from the GUI. Um, so first of all, our uh, responses. You can see on the left, the observed responses, so our actual data, and then on the right, our predicted responses and you have um, at the top uh, condition one, so standards, and at the bottom that's condition two, so deviance. You can also look at it in this way, so looking at images instead, we have time in the y-axis and channels on the x-axis. And again, for observed and predicted responses and for our two conditions. Okay, we can also look at our eight modes in our data that we're fitting. So you can see that mode one comprises most of the variance in the data. Um, there's also mode three, four, five, you can um, see again the observed response and the predicted response in each case. So you can start to get an idea of whether your model is doing a good job at fitting your data or not. And then here we have our five sources. So we have left and right A1, left and right STG, and right IFG. And again, we can see in this case, um, observed and predicted responses for our three different uh, cell populations. We have the pyramidal neurons, inhibitory interneurons, and spiny seven cells. This is our um, connectivity or coupling. So for matrix B, our, our trial specific effects, 
If you remember, we only specified backward connections in our B matrix. So this is why we only see three plots here. This is where our three connections from left STG to left A1, right STG to right A1, and from right IFT to right STG. And you can see the two conditions there being plotted. And this is our input. So remember that our prior onset was at 64 milliseconds, which is the default, and um, the duration was 16 milliseconds. And finally, we have the scalp maps. Um, this is also a very good way to tell if we're fitting our data or not. So again, we have observed and predicted responses. So the first two rows are the standards, and then the second two rows are the deviants in this case. This will obviously depend on your specific uh, design. Okay. One thing we can do with BCM is run a lot of different models and then use Bayesian model comparison to identify the one that does the best job at explaining our data. So this is what Garrido and colleagues did in 2008. And they um, run a model like the one that we just run, for example, with um, modulation of the backward connections, as well as a more complex model with modulation of both forward, backward, and also some self connections like the one we had specified initially. Okay, so you can um, try a lot of different things based on the hypothesis you may have, and then use Bayesian model comparison to identify the best one. So here you can see the negative free energy for each of these models. And as you can see, the forward, backward, and intrinsic connection model. So the one that I'm showing you on the right um, does a better job than the backward or B model that we run just now. Okay. And then finally, I'm going to show you what the output looks like. Of DCM. So this will save a, a file that looks like this with a lot of different um, variables saved in, in this structure. I'm going to show you just some of the key ones that you need to know, but I invite you to just explore this on your own after this demo and to ask any questions you may have about what's in here. Okay, so first of all, options. This contains all the different options that we specified um, in our DCM. So you can see that we have our um, trials, one and two. We have um, our observation model, neuronal model, forward model. Um, we have the time window and frequency window. So um, these were the defaults in this case, but you may want to change them for your own analysis. And then all the different settings that we could choose from. And close this and then have a look at XY. So this is our data. You can see at the top the name of the data file that we loaded at the very beginning of this demo to get started with the analysis and then some more information about our data. Here we have the labels for our sources and then in LPOS that's our coordinates. So our prior um, locations for our different sources. Perhaps the most important is our posterior parameter estimates. These are in DCM.ap. So you can see here all, uh, all our different parameters. For example, you can recognize A and B. Um, these are our extrinsic connectivity matrices. We have our time constants in T. Um, our G parameters, so these are, these are our intrinsic connections, and so on. And then you have for each of them a value for the mean uh, posterior. So that's, that's in DCM EP. If you go to DCM CP, you have the posterior covariances as well. If you instead want to look at the priors, these are inside M.PE for the prior means, and then .pc for the prior covariance. Okay. 
in A, we have our uh, connectivity uh, matrix that we specified. So we have forward, backward, and the lateral connections that we specified at the very beginning. So this will be saved in here. And then in B, we have our um, modulatory or trial specific effects. Okay. And then the last thing that you may want to use, especially as you learn about um, Bayesian model comparison, is the free energy is saved in DCM. You can see it here. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, I look forward to your questions and please feel free to send me an email if you have any more detailed questions or need some very specific support. I'll be more than happy to help. Thank you.